Hi, this is David from Studio One Expert. Today I've got a software review for you, namely Liquid Notes by the company Recompose. Now, this is a very interesting compositional tool which lets you reharmonize your songs, create new melodies. It's a great inspirational tool and we will have a look at it, how it works. Now, when I was doing some research for this uh, review, I found out that Re uh, Recompose is actually a company based in Austria, in Vienna, and this is the city where I live. So I dropped them an email and Roland from Recompose invited me to their office and we had a very nice chat where he introduced me to the software. So many thanks for that, Roland. Okay, so Liquid Noise is a standalone application. It's not a plugin, but it can communicate with Studio One and with other DAWs. We are a small application which runs in the background. It gets uh, installed automatically when you install Liquid Notes. It's called Loop B30. And it basically just provides a MIDI port from Liquid Notes to Studio One. Now Liquid Notes works only with MIDI files, so you cannot use audio files. There is no time stretching or pitch shifting algorithms. You need to have your song as a MIDI file. Now how does this work? Let's launch Studio One. So this is a song sketch of mine, it's just a basic idea for a song. I've got one verse, one chorus. I usually start a song anyway as a, as a pure MIDI uh, production because it's great to be able to change the tempo and the key without any issues until you are not so sure where the song is going. So let me play it to you one time just that you can hear uh, where we're starting at. Okay, and so, so this is just a basic um, idea for a song. As you can see, I have only four tracks, just a melody, a piano part, which plays the chords, a bass, and some drums. Now all you'll need to do is simply save this song as a MIDI file, just use the normal save as function, select MIDI file, and then open liquid notes. And as you can see, drop MIDI file here, it invites us we can do exactly that. This is the file from this uh, song. So we just put it there. And then it asks us what we would like to use for the sound output source. Now it has a built-in synthesizer um, in it, so you don't need to use it with Studio One. It can create sounds on its own, which are okay. I mean, they are usable, but of course in Studio One we have better sounds available. So I'm choosing Studio One, click Next. And then it analyzes your MIDI file and it basically decides for every track what it thinks it is. So there are three possibilities. It can either be a melody or a track containing chords or bass or a percussion, which is everything else, which has no tonal um, content. There's actually four possibilities. So, and here you, you can check uh, if it um, analyzed it correctly or not. So these are the track names from our from our actual song. Uh, melody is a melody, this is cool. Piano, it detected as chords, which is correct. Bass is not quite correct, so we can click here and select bass. And the drums are percussion, so that's fine. So let me go ahead and click next. Then it analyzed your song. And as you can see here, here we have the out channels. They are in ascending order from 1 to 4. This is exactly what we need. So let's click next again. And this is basically, it's ready to go now. Now there are some important settings we need to make in Studio One in order for this to work correctly. Uh, first of all, let's select all our tracks. And in the input drop to menu, we have to select liquid notes as the input for the MIDI tracks. 
you see if we have all selected then they all change at once and then besides the input we select the uh, channels in ascending order so we have here ch channel one it's fine here we take channel two channel three and channel four and one last thing uh, we need to activate the monitor button for all of the tracks that's it what that's all we had to do in studio one so basically we could even minimize the program now and we will just hear the sounds coming from studio one if we hit play here okay so you can see it analyzed our song and here we have the chords now this is maybe a little bit the looks of it is a bit confusing for somebody who is used to DAWs because if you see like columns like this, uh, normally we associate it with channels, especially if we have like some kind of faders here. But these are not channels, these are the actual chords in the song. So it moves from left to right, as you can see in the play cursor. So it starts with the G, minor, uh, G major, then with a B minor, F major, C major, and it uh, repeats. We also have a piano roll here, but this is just for visualization, so we cannot edit the notes here. If you click on this little icon, then you can see the tracks are color coded, so we can differentiate them. And we can, if you want, we can decide to not include, for example, the drums we really don't need to see in the piano roll. So let's exclude it. We have a conventional transport controls here below, and we can turn a loop on and off. And with this icon here, uh, we can let the cursor, it's basically like in Studio One, the follow edit position button. So now we can start to have some fun and change our song completely with just a few clicks. So how do we do that? Now the main controls are this slider here, which sets the musical function of the chord in the piece. So it can either be a dominant, which is it here, or it can be a subdominant, or the tonic and you can see when I move the slider the chord above changes so the tonic would be the C major F major of course is the subdominant and it is like it was the G major and then we have this chord uh, knob here and the tension knob and we can change the chords just by turning them and it's nice that we can hear them play so let's start our loop maybe just for the let's for the first two chords and turn the loop on. Now some of you might have easy keys, which is also great software and it lets you also in a similar way change the chords of a MIDI file. But the big difference is here that all the tracks which we loaded into Liquid Notes, everything gets changed at the same time. So not only the chords get changed, but also the melody, so that it fits the new chords, also the bass line and everything else. So let's see this in action. Let me just quickly reset the first chord to its original uh, chord. We can use this button here for that. So whenever you get lost, you just hit reset and everything is like before. Let's hit play. And I'm just playing the first two chords with the melody. And now let's just turn the chord knob to the second position. Let's see what happens. Let's turn the chord knob also on the second chord. Turn it one more time. So we made a nice uh, minor to major change there. So let's go with this for now and let's try the knob below the chord knob which says tension, which do what they say, they add tensions to the chords, so additional notes.
And as you can see, as we turn the knob uh, clockwise, uh, the light around it gets uh, more intense in color. So it goes from green to yellow to orange to red. So this is indicating that we move more and more into unconventional territory, so that the results may sound a little weird. So if you want to be in a safe place, then it's better not to go past the middle so that it stays green like this. So this is, sounds still very nice and uh, is a little bit jazzy already, but it's still also okay for pop music. So as you can see, we completely transformed the first two chords in a matter of seconds. Just as a reminder, let me reset both chords and play it as it was. Very nice. Of course it helps if you know a little bit about music theory, but you really don't need to. So. You can use this program without any music theory knowledge and get some interesting results. So this is quite unique about it. Now let's go to a place in the song where we also have bass. I think it starts somewhere around here. A bit earlier. Yeah, the chorus starts here. So let's again use two bars, activate the loop. Let's just play around again with the chord knobs. You can hear it takes a second for it to calculate again. And you can hear how also the bass got changed. Now, if you know already exactly what chord you want, you can also use this drop down menu here and just select the chord directly, like this. Now, the chords you get in this drop down menu depend very much on the position of the slider here. So, if you change this, then as you can see, we also get a different set of chords. So, let's listen to this again. So, as you can see, we transformed our song quite heavily. So let's say we are happy with this and we like to save it and continue working on the song. So let's go back to Studio One. And normally all you have to do is click this little icon here and drag and drop it to Studio One. You can see the tracks there. But for some reason it doesn't work right now. I don't know why. It did work yesterday. Maybe... Uh, I don't know what the reason is, but no problem, you can go, just go to the file menu and click here, export MIDI file, give it a name and import it then into Studio One. So, no problems there. So there you have it. It's a great tool. I think it's very unique in the market. There is not much which is like this. It also has many features which I could not cover now, like, for example, it can... Um, you can use it as a live tool for improvisation so that it can uh, correct mistakes in your playing. So you just play on your keyboard, the white keys for example, and it automatically plays the notes uh, which fit to the chords. And Roland von Recompose told me that they are planning some exciting new features for the future, so it's worth checking out their website once in a while. Okay, I hope you found this interesting. If you think that this can be useful to you, just go to the site and download the demo and give it a try. Thank you for watching. I've been David. Bye-bye.